Hello everyone and welcome to Eddie Search Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to discuss a very interesting case-based discussion on gallbladder polyps. And this is a very common scenario that we see in our practice. And so we thought that we'll compile a few guidelines and see how to manage patients with gallbladder polyps. So a very routine day in our clinics, a 40-year-old lady walks into the OPD. There are no comorbidities. It's a routine health checkup that she has undergone with normal blood investigations. But ultrasound suggests a sub-centimeter gallbladder polyp with no gallstones. And you have an image which is something like this. So when these kind of patients come to you, Further workup is required or do you directly offer surgery or do you tell the lady there is nothing to worry and you can follow up. So very commonly seen scenario in outpatients these days because a lot of patients undergo health checkup. And when you are faced with a scenario where patient has gallbladder polyp, sometimes single, sometimes multiple, sometimes the sonography report is not complete. What to do in these cases is what we are going to see. So to understand the very basics of gallbladder polyps, it is basically an elevation of the gallbladder mucosa into its lumen. Usually incidental detection, very uncommon to have symptoms due to gallbladder polyps. Like I said, it's routinely seen in patients who have done health checkups, usually asymptomatics. True polyps are only 5% and prevalence in population is also 5%. So when we say true polyps, we are looking at adenoma or adenocarcinoma. And in pseudo polyps, you can have cholesterol polyps, focal adenomyosis, hyperplastic polyp, and inflammatory polyp. And remember that pseudo polyps are more common. Okay, so that is something that you need to remember. Now there is a very nice review on gallbladder polyps in the World Journal of Gastroenterology. You can see the link below. It is in 2018, but one of the excellent reviews to read on this subject. So if you want to go through the entire literature, you are welcome to read this article. Now, when it comes to pathological classification, benign neoplastic polyps can be adenoma and supporting tissue polyps can be hemangioma, lipoma, leomyoma, or granular cell tumors. Non-neoplastic polyps are more common and most of them are pseudo polyps. They can be inflammatory polyp or cholesterol polyp, can be heterotopia or can be hyperplasia. So now coming to how to work up these patients, the most common investigation that they will come up with is a transabdominal ultrasound. You can add contrast to ultrasound that may give some more information. After the patient presents to you, the most common discussion is whether to do a CT or an MRI. And to cut the long story short, we prefer MRI because it is going to give you more information with bilaser contrast. The biliary system is going to enhance very well in T2 phases and that is what you want to see. Endoscopic ultrasound is not routinely used in these cases. So let us have a look at some of them that are routinely done. So ultrasound, like I said, is the most common investigation and most common test that is used for follow-up of these patients. You will see an immobile elevation in the lumen with no posterior acoustic shadowing. This is important because shadowing is suggestive of a stone. No reverberation or comet tail artifacts which are suggestive of focal adenomyomatosis or a cholesterol polyp. So this is how differentials can be made on ultrasound. Polyp can be sessile or if it has a stalk that is pedunculated. So there is a society of radiologists in ultrasound which have given guidelines on how to manage these patients. And you can see that they have defined when to write what in the sonography report. So gallbladder polyp is a solid non-mobile and non-shadowing protrusion from the gallbladder mucosa that is not gallstone sludge ball, mucosal fold, focal thickening, okay? So all these are differential diagnoses. When we say focal wall thickening adjacent to polyp, remember that gallbladder wall thickness is when it is more than or equal to 4 mm. So that is something known as focal wall thickening. Sludge is inspissated bile that has precipitated out of solution and often ecogenic, but it may also be non-shadowing. 
adenomyomatosis we know is mural hyperplasia that may be diffuse adenomyomatosis or focal adenomyosis or segmental usually as a common tail artifact which arises due to intramural cholesterol crystals solid shadowing hyperechoic and non vascular is the classical gold stone so this society has given a guideline on how to go about when you get patients with polyps and what they suggest is that if the sonographic technique is not good or if gallbladder is not well distended then you need to repeat the ultrasound that is the first step you may add doppler or contrast enhanced ultrasound but the first step is to assess the quality of the report if the report is not good then you have to repeat the ultrasound so if you cannot distinguish between a greater than 1 cm sludge or adenomyomatosis or suspected gallbladder polyp again the advice is to repeat an ultrasound or do a contrast enhanced ultrasound or mri for further characterization practically when we see more than 1 cm lesion we do an mri if there is suspicion of malignant tumor definitely an mri is required if there is history of primary sclerosing cholangitis gi specialty guidelines need to be followed if these are ruled out and the gallbladder polyp is present then you look at what the society of radiologists in ultrasound suggest as a follow up so basically rule out malignancy rule out primary sclerosing cholangitis adenomyomatosis a polyp more than 1 cm and sludge ball once you rule out all these things then how to follow up these patients they have classified the findings into three groups extremely low risk are patients with pedunculated ball on the wall or pedunculated with thin stalk less than 9 mm the patients usually don't need follow up is what they suggest but what we do is we follow them up as per the gastroenterology guidelines 10 to 14 mm we don't follow up usually more than 1 cm is advised surgery we will see the guideline of the various gastroenterology societies after this slide but remember that for any polyp if the polyp is sessile then it is considered as a bit higher risk than the polyps that are pedunculated if there is focal wall thickening adjacent to the polyp that is also a high risk feature so in these patients especially for polyps more than 1 cm a surgical consult is definitely required and we will see how the gastroenterology guidelines differ from the radiology guidelines so next point of imaging after doing an ultrasound usually what we do is an mri this is done to stage a suspicious malignant polyp or characterization of polyp in case of doubt on ultrasound diffusion weighted mri images will also help however remember that once you have done one mri and that mri says 4 mm polyp then mri is not recommended as a routine follow up investigation over ultrasound because it has not shown benefit so what we do is you do one mri if there are no high risk features you can follow up that patient on ultrasound when the growth of polyp is there then you can again do an mri to confirm the findings of ultrasound of course tumor markers can be added but they have again not shown benefit when it comes to eus the cochrane systematic review was quite old 2018 but it suggests that there is insufficient evidence that eus is better compared to ultrasound so that is about eus so basically the patient comes with ultrasound you do tumor markers if there are features where mri is indicated like seen on this slide then you do an mri and if the patient don't match the surgical criteria of the gastroenterology guidelines that you will see in the next slide then you follow them up with six monthly ultrasound so what are the risk factors for malignancy there are patient characteristics and polyp characteristics size more than 1 cm rapid increase in size is known as more than 4 mm in 12 months sessile polyp focal gb wall thickening more than 4 mm symptomatic polyps and gold stones with polyp none of these have been proven to be clearly associated with malignancy but they are all risk factors where we have seen that the incidence of malignancy is a bit higher than normal 
population. So polyp characteristics, and then we go to patient characteristics, age more than 50, Indian origin, patients with primary sclerosing cholangitis are definitely at risk. So now we go to the various gastroenterology society guidelines, and this is one of the guidelines where a lot of societies have come together. And what they suggest is for that for polyp greater than one centimeter, cholecystectomy is suggested. So that is something that is very important that for more than one centimeter, cholecystectomy is suggested if no alternative cause of symptoms is demonstrated, patient is fit for surgery. The patient should be counseled regarding the benefit of cholecystectomy. For polyps that are less than one centimeter, if the symptoms are not attributable to gallbladder, then you have to see if the patient has risk factors. We saw all the risk factors in the previous slide. If the risk factors are present, then for all polyps greater than 5 mm, a surgery is recommended. For polyps less than 5 mm, a follow-up ultrasound is recommended at 6 months. We do it every 6 monthly. The guideline says you can do it at 6 months, 1 year and 2 years. After two years, the follow-up can be discontinued, but we continue a six-month follow-up in our practical outpatients department. For patients who don't have any risk factor, which is not going to be there in India because Asian ethnicity is a risk factor. So essentially for our population in India, you are looking at a polyp greater than 5 mm going for cholecystectomy. For polyp 6 to 9 mm where there are no risk factors, you can do a follow-up ultrasound just like the follow-up ultrasound that is done here. And polyp less than 5 mm follow-up is not required. So for Indian setting or for patients with Asian origin and patients with risk factor, for all polyps more than 5 mm, you have to do something. For all polyps less than 5 mm, follow-up 6 monthly is what is recommended. So these are basically the gastroenterology guidelines. So when we see a patient to summarize what we have discussed, a patient of gallbladder polyp, first look at the quality of the ultrasound, whether there is any suspicion of malignancy, risk factors of malignancy such as polyp size more than one centimeter, gallstones with polyp, Asian origin, age more than 50, sessile poly, focal wall thickening greater than 4 mm. If any of these features are present, the patient goes for surgery if the polyp is more than 5 mm. Initially, even if you are not opting for surgery, an MRI and tumor markers are recommended. Once these are done, you take a call based on the risk factor assessment and the imaging findings on whether the patient should undergo surgery or not. So that is how a patient of gallbladder polyp can be managed. Thank you.